Hello, and welcome back to Star Wars Minute. It's the daily podcast where we analyze, scrutinize, and celebrate the Star Wars stories. Stories? The Star Wars movies. One minute at a time. We're done with stories. We did them both. For now. I'm Pete the Retailer from PeteTheRetailer.com. I'm Alex Robinson from AlexRobinson.fun. And today, we are discussing Minute 4 of Star Wars Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker. Uh, Minute 4 starts with uh, Kylo driving intently. He's very focused on his driving. It's good. And then uh, and then it ends with a, a sultry, booming voice declaring, at last. At last. It's like the Obama administration. We get, at last. Hmm. Should we have... Should we overlay this? Because there's not a lot of dialogue uh, in the next uh, minute or two, I don't think. Or maybe the, maybe it's just this minute. But I think, I mean, should we overlay this with Etta James singing at last and see what... Do we have to pay for it? Yeah, well, we shouldn't do it uh, as, a, as a podcast, but just uh, at home, if you want, uh, you know, sync it up, see what... Oh, yeah. In uh, fact, this maybe. episode is designed specifically to sync up exactly with Etta there James' at right. last. We kind of did that on purpose, so we, you'll be surprised. Mm-hmm. So uh, you mentioned that he was driving intently. Yes. You know, all like, Rrr. do you think he was doing, like, was he, I love intent, the the, was he intent the whole time? Because it, you know, had to be probably a couple yeah. of hours. If this is in unknown space, it has to be like a distance. I think, yeah, there was a lot of not driving intently. And then now he's at the, um, now what is the it? He's, at the, he's in the red honeycomb zone. So he's got to be, <laughs> okay. he's got to pay attention. So he knows. Because now it's just like the, uh, you know, there's Turn like, there's a lot of freeway face. driving before where yeah. he was just kind of, he was listening to an audio book. He was just kind of. <laughs> what kind of audio books you think he, or podcasts does he listen to on hmm. his uh, comedy? Does he listen to like potential educational I mean, ones? It's, it's, it's. Don't, it I must f- be like Darth Vader's memoirs or something. Oh, maybe. Yeah. He's listening. And then he listens to like all kinds of, you know, books about the history of that era you know what i mean mm-hmm. like there have to be like historians talking about the the rise of the empire and or do you think he just listens to you know he's he's he has many layers do you think he listens to like you know maybe a thriller or a or a true thriller con- of tr- song <laughs> no no like a like a listening he doesn't necessarily always listen to sith related things mm-hmm. he could listen to he has other hobbies and interests maybe a, I don't, it seems pretty kind of one note with all this you think so mm, yeah. yeah he's kind of a shallow guy a little bit. And he's trying really hard. Although, you know, if he's alone. One yeah. one theme that we'll keep coming back to. He's listening to like the Spice Girls or something. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like one one <laughs> theme that we'll come back to is that, you know, Kylo Ren is, is like we've said, the the little boy trying to put on the the veneer of being badass. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he's trying, he's playing this role and trying it on and trying to putting on this front of being tough guy. Yeah. And we'll, we'll, We'll see that coming up, um, but I think once he, you know, once he's alone, just you know, here in his car, he's that's it. He's listening to Gary Newman. Mm. Um, but here, you know, it's just him There's alone in his Tie emo. Fighter. <laughs> and then, oh yeah, that's got to be yeah. What was on the the Kylo Ren? Wasn't there a Kylo Ren Spotify playlist? Oh, probably. Hmm, I don't have it in front of me, but I'll uh, I'll look it up. I'll look you... it up. You want to look it up? <clears throat> yeah, I'll look it up while you bring up the next point. Well, um, well, in a way, speaking of Spotify, um, the the Sith Wayfinder reminds me the way that I love the way that it it's um, just kind of you know plugged into his dashboard, like he's got a a the Sith Wayfinder is, is connected in like a very physical kind of connection. It's got like a like a moving cog or like a little wheel or something like that that kind of connects this Sith Wayfinder to the actual, um, you know, navigation uh, of his, of his TIE fighter. And I feel like that, um, A, it's cool because you, you know, it's like the, the old welding gimmick. Was there a Kylo Ren playlist? There was, there is. Okay. Do you want to hear about it? Uh, Okay. Finish your point. Well, this is going to lead into kind of a, uh, well, might not lead into anything. I don't want to set it up, but. We'll come back to it. Yes, we'll let, let's put a pin in the Kylo Ren playlist. We'll come back to it. Okay. Um, I was saying welding. that seeing the Sith Wayfinder hooked up to his dashboard with a very kind of physical, kind of you know like like a, a kind MacGyver. of you see wheels, you see connectors, and it and it is like like imagine finding 
a a thing like all right here's the way the only way that you can find your way to to your destination is if you figure out a way to use you know this like betamax tape or or mm-hmm. you know the instructions are on this uh uh you know, even like answering machine cassette, you know, the micro cassette or, you know, yeah. any one of these things where it's just like an old technology that you yeah. have to use to get your way to where you're going. And I like that he's got this thing that's connected. It looks, you know, it's not just like, boop, and he puts it in the computer and it magically goes. It yeah. looks like it's connected via, you know, externally yeah. via like, you know, somebody had to do some work. And I love the idea of like him going back and like, there's like, there's like somebody at the first order Maybe it's the Sith chimp. No, that's the. But somebody at the first order, like who's got like you know the bin of cables, mm-hmm. like I you know, even like right next to me, I've got like a bin of cables. It's just like never going to use most of those again. Right. Um. You know, my oh, favorite one know. that I have somewhere in here is one that goes. Essentially, it looks like it goes from a Walkman to an Atari joystick. Wow. Like, and that, that's the most '80s cable I own. But mm-hmm. but I love having this just bin of like, all right, one of these days I might have a need for that that wire. Yeah. Um and I love the the idea that he found the Sith Wayfinder and went back and the guy's like, okay, hang on a second, and like pulled out these things and it's like, oh well, if we if we run it through this, we can convert it to this and, and yeah. uh I think there was probably a much longer lag time between him he found it and then it took like six months for him to figure out how to connect it mm. to his ship and then suddenly mysterious cables arrived in the mail that Palpatine sent to kind of like <laughs> nudge him along you know what he's I mean? getting like targeted ads being yeah. like can't find that connector <laughs> yeah so uh well you know he's super into well I guess he was at some point he was slash is really into Sith stuff so I imagine he mm-hmm. could probably figure out how to you know right I assume he had to know that this Sith technology like he, yeah, he knew he was gonna have to figure it out. So, uh, so anyway, yeah. so he gets I, it I on like his it. way. I, I'm, to... I like that we get to see it. I like the the idea that this happened. I don't want to see it on a screen. I don't want to see him. It's a theme it that we're coming back that we're, we'll keep coming back to. I'm glad we didn't have to watch him having to figure it out. Although, to a certain extent, there is like a little, like Harry Potter, like dropping the egg in the bathtub kind of a thing. Yeah, I uh, my thing about the movie is I wish they had spent more time uh, on mundane things, like spent like half an hour of him trying to figure out trying different <laughs> cables and trying to, and then uh, and then so on. So right. the movie would be two hours and forty five, you know, an hour and a half of it would just be people trying to do basic things like right. find a parking spot for his ship or or <laughs> something like that. So he makes his way to Exegol. Yes. Uh, and- Contrast. I know it's very modern, you know, orange and teal kind of whatever. But the uh, I I I do like that we like we've got the like deep glowing red, and then he comes into like the like like super neon blue, you know, almost like mm-hmm. black light yeah. planet. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I know that it's modern. You know, there's there's modern movie making has that problem where it's like everything's ramped up to the extreme on that, and it it, it but still. I like the contrast between the last scene and this scene. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and um, d- despite what many people think, that is not the sand crawler there landed on Exegol. It'd be funny if he landed on the planet. It was like the Jawa homeworld. It's shaped kind of like a sand crawler. Yeah. The, the Sith building mm-hmm. there. So, Sith, uh, the Sith building. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. yeah that, so that's Sith my Corp. other... <laughs> um. I mean, maybe the why is is the wayfinder that precise? Is it just basically like a ping like to that building to that? Like, it makes it seem Unknown. like oh, he's going to the planet of Exegol. Like, and it just does it get to the planet, or does it like is it like you know Google Maps or something? Like, I, once you get closer, like it'll kind of zoom in a little bit and get you like, oh, okay, it's also nope. It it it'll get you right to where you want to go. It'll take you to like the parking lot. When he went, he punched, took the Sith wayfinder, he punched into like Exegol. I was like, okay, which. Do you want Terminal A or uh, yeah. like <laughs> yeah, to specify? Whole, yeah. Well, so yeah, that's another example where he, he lands his plane and he immediately walks into the temple and like knows where to go. And I think it should have been like, you know, like you're trying to get into a baseball stadium. You're not sure. Like, like he has to go all the way around it to try to like, oh, where's right. the entrance in this thing? And oh, then, man. You know, the, I would love that. Like, like the guy, uh, 
like the guy that they that they find when they're trying to get to the stage in Spinal Tap, where they run yeah. into like like <laughs> Kylo Ren is trying to get in, and he's like, you know, yeah. where are you trying to go? And he's like, oh, <laughs> like, oh no, you, you can't get there from you. Got to walk around and then yeah. make a left and then go down and <laughs> quick jog. A little jog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, because he does seem to get right, and then once he parks, like he doesn't park right next to the door. Mm-mm. He parks a little bit of a walk away, and maybe there are marked spots, so I'll allow that. Yeah. He wants to He park closest to the exit, because he knows that when he wants to come mm. out, the parking lot's going to be filled, and he doesn't want to be go. right, you know, he wants to be as close to the exit as possible. He's thinking right. ahead. Mm. Um, uh, and, but there's lightning everywhere. It does seem very dangerous. Yeah. Maybe it's now, just like static electricity without, you know. I guess so. But, yeah. But there's also like... Like, A, I'm worried for his ship. His ship yeah. is going to get lightninged. Uh-huh. And then he just walks straight into, like, a hallway, and the hallway has, like, crackling lightning going all through it. Yeah. And, Maybe like, that's how you it, know you're on your... I mean, you, you know you're arriving at, this, at the right place when there's lightning everywhere. That's a yeah, good I guess sign so. that you're, you're in a Sith. Uh, he went to the other hallways, didn't have lightning. They just had, like, fluorescent... For a fluorescent lights and, and like little benches and stuff, and he's like, "This can't bus be stop, it." Bus stop so there's a there. there's a water fountain here, a bubbler, <laughs> as the kids say. Yeah. Um. He went back around to the like, oh, there's I saw the same guy. And the guy's like, "No, no, no, go down, take a left." <laughs> Must you see the one the, the door with the lightning? Yeah, no, go down that way. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, then he's got to go. What what yeah. is the most? Uh, What's the most lost you've ever been in a situation like that where you've had to find something? Um, you know, I think actually fairly recently when uh, we went to uh, Star, Star Trek uh, Mission mm-hmm. Chicago mm-hmm. Where, the, where we went to the uh, convention center there and I walked from one part of Chicago to there and I could not find the entrance to the... I like went into the hotel and, you know, where the... It's like a complex of buildings that are associated with the convention right. center. So, and you know, that's what I was. It's funny because I sort of I, exactly what I was imagining it being like him having to go down these long hallways. Then they're like, "Oh no, no, it's the other way." And you're like, "Oh, now you got to walk back during that long hallway." It's uh, right. It's it's pretty. Uh, do you remember a time you were especially lost? Well, I, it's funny. I do remember that too. That we was like trying a bunch of different doors, and you start to see other nerds that are yeah. And the problem is everything is so spaced out that if you take a wrong turn, you really have to backtrack like a long, a lot of ways. That's probably the, so yeah. Yeah. On foot, that's definitely the most lost. I mean, I guess in a car, I haven't been lost for a while thanks to GPS, but um, you know, so you can, can you remember a time you had trouble accessing a building? That would be funny seeing Kylo Ren like it's like a fire door where he can see inside, but he can't get in because it's locked from the other side. I right. guess he would, do you think he would just break the glass, or is he? Mm, like, he does. He would get angry, yeah, and then he would break the glass. Although, if it's a Sith building, it's probably lightsaber proof glass. Hmm. That would even make him. It would. It would be like a like a cartoon moment again, where he would be like, take it as lightsaber and go like whack it, but it'd be like, <laughs> you know, like bad yeah. vibrations. Yeah. Then again, since Palpatine is trying to make this as difficult possible, maybe there is no door, and the solution is you have to cut it open with your lightsaber to get in. Right. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like you have to earn it again with his. Right. His, yeah. His, his, uh, mm, it's another another yet another trick. Yeah. And it would be there. a door that was lightsaber proof unless you were really, 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 you know what I mean? Like you had to get so angry that to cut through it, like you had to use your Sith powers mm, and get right. angry enough to like, right. Which Luke also f- do it. So. Feeds him, right? Yes. That would make Palpatine. Him. That's why you had to get angry because he needed to, he needed to siphon off some of that anger. Yeah. That was like ringing the doorbell. He would know someone was there because he'd be like, oh, wait, I'm sensing mm. a disturbance. Hmm. Someone's very frustrated at the front door. What, what is? Do I, do I smell anger? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> we, we, uh, Darwak? Is there somebody at the door? I'm, I'm sensing a little bit of anger because <laughs> yeah. Darwak's still here for some reason. Uh, uh, well, yeah, I hope Darwak's still here. Hired help. It's good help is hard to find. I'm sure he tried to get as much of his staff to. to he recruited as much of his old staff as he could to come. Um, right. He's like the Smithers of, yeah. of, of uh, uh, Palpatine's Mr. Burns. Um. So he does make his way inside. Yeah. And he uh, steps onto like a giant floating elevator. Yeah. All right. So this, this is another complaint. I don't uh-huh. like that. And, and again, these are minor little things that I don't like. Yeah. I don't, that is a little too 
fantasy nonsense. It's actually a little bit video gamey. It's like it is very video. Onto. This whole it's it's absurd. This this whole building and and it's it's absurd. Well, once he gets in, I don't have a but again. My I just really these these <laughs> what will and what won't set me off. I don't know why. Yeah. Who knows? But like once he gets in, I'm fine. It's just the actual elevator itself had not having any. And we've seen floating Senate pods, and it's all like it should it it jives, I guess, with that. But yeah. like, um, I I just don't I don't like the way it looks here because it does look very video gamey. It just kind of steps onto the platform, and the platform lowers to his next part of the of the the next the next boss he has to be right. Yeah. Well, that's but I mean that the I think it's also like a video game in that it's it's absurd in that like why did like. Did Palpatine say, yes, I want you to build a thousand story tall building like with gigantic statues that are 500, you know, like it's it's I like monstrous in its in its impracticality. I don't. It's very I space wizardy. I it's don't very, think he built this right. Isn't this an existing Sith planet that he like he he came here to to. So the Sith built all this in this elevator for. You're telling me a Sith built this elevator? <laughs> um. I don't know. Maybe the Sith are really big. Oh, it's like Snoke. It's like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, fascist governments have a history of building gigantic, monstrous buildings because that's what they're into. You know, like, right. I don't know if you've ever seen, like, Hitler's plans for what Germany would have looked like if he had won the war. And there were these absurdly, ridiculously oversized buildings. You know, picture, like, a building that would be, like, four times as a dome, like, three times the size of the U.S. Capitol. Like, just... Right. ridiculous and so but it just seems very um it just raises so many questions like are there bathrooms in this place like what mm. what do do they grow food here like does everyone like who are mm. all these people living in this dark place the, like anyway well well we don't we don't yeah, see, we don't one see any yet. people in it. yeah so i'll say but my we, my we do get the i do like the way that a lot of it is this is going to sound like a criticism again. I do like the way that we don't see a lot of it. I do like the way it's revealed only in lightning flashes and we get little glimpses of things here and there because uh-huh. it makes it spookier and it makes yeah. it. And I feel like if we were just staring at statues or, you know, characters the whole time, we'd, be, we'd have more time to pick it apart and be like, oh, it's dumb. But if it's just like, like little yeah. flashes, glimpses, uh, these giant statues, which are apparently statues of Sith legends. Hmm. So Not canon. Yeah. No. The Sith canon is pointing out the other. Yeah. Um yeah, but the uh um it's a Sith legend. Here here are some giant Sith legends. So each of these is a specific character from a Sith from a Sith legend, presumably. I think so. You know, yeah. it, it's a little bit like uh like the origin story of uh, Captain Marvel, Shazam. Oh yeah, where he like you know goes down into the into the kind of platform tunnel and goes past all these giant statues. Mm-hmm. He should be walking by them, and they should all spell out like the name of, uh, I don't know what what his Darth name. He should get a Darth name. Yeah, he he's going to be working for Palpatine. You think you think Palpatine had a Darth name like picked out for him, ready to use? That he was just like, I had if you wanna. Well, isn't officially, the plan? Isn't the plan that Palpatine is going to take over his body? Um, isn't that why Palpatine is is luring people here to so that he they can become a vessel for his soul? Well, he or wants something? their energy. It's kind of unclear. Spoiler alert! One of my other complaints about the movie is the ending. How it's just kind of like a, it's the mo- like, again. How many times have I like do I dismiss things by saying like yeah modern movie making but like it's often just like a battle of nebulous un not yeah. like not well documented energy beams that ends yeah. in somebody winning you know yeah. what i mean and that that that's just what that's just what happens kind of at the end and i think the thing is like yeah that he was just going to suck their energy their life energy so he they weren't going to be like host bodies he was just no i know you know who was going to be the host body was was Matt Smith <laughs> you know this whole this, that's this right. whole yeah, thing yeah, you yeah. know yeah, we haven't really talked about that. Well, I well, we can talk about it now. That it was Matt Smith, the um, let's see, the eleventh Doctor, Doctor. Um, or am I forgetting one in between? But uh, he was 
He's also in now that Game of Thrones, right? And he's also uh, and he was in the Crown. He's yeah, he's um, he's <coughs> he Olivia was... Coleman's husband in the Crown. The second, right. he's oh, the wait. second iteration of he's the eleventh Doctor, the second uh, Prince Prince Philip, uh, Prince Philip, and the first uh, uh, Tardarian. Right. Okay. So Not I did watch. You I did watch some of that season of of the Crown. I guess. Okay. <clears throat> Are you sure he's from the Olivia Coleman? Hey, this isn't a crown prod- podcast. Yeah, he's totally the Olivia. Uh... Oh no, no, he's no, the he's first. The Claire Foy he's one. the first. Yeah, yeah the, you're right. He's yeah. the first. Uh, prince so, because I did Philip. see stuff with him as yeah, Philip. Um, but uh, anyway, he was uh, like never a hundred percent fully officially announced. He was rumored to have been cast in the movie. There's a uh, like the, I think like the UK Disney website posted a thing that he was cast in it, but like mm-hmm. they had never, no official announcement had ever come down. And I think he was being closely looked at. And I, I, I can't help but think it was basically, he was going to be a host body. So when they came down here, he was going to find, it was also oh, not to, not to keep going back to Harry Potter for some reason, but almost like a Voldemort situation where it's going to be like a host body. And then it does like, feel very Harry Pottery. You think that you don't know that it's actually Palpatine. And then it's going to be like, Oh, it turns out that's, that's who it was. This is this mm. Palpatine kind of clone body. You know, yeah. like a Tom, he was going to be the Tom Riddle to Palpatine's. Mm. Um, and I, so I can't help but think either. Is it once the creative, team change he backed out or did that pushing it back change to scheduling so he couldn't do it a la um uh, uh michael williams. k williams in, yeah. in solo or was it more like all right well they had him set up in case they couldn't get ian mcdermott and then they just went they're uh-huh. like oh well we got all of you in case they couldn't get ian mcdermott they're like well <laughs> We got we got one of the most popular stars on on TV right now, uh, but uh, th- that's just a backup plan in case we can't get the guy who played the space wizard forty years ago. Yeah, but you know how angry people get if they recast stuff if the person's still <laughs> well, alive. So people would have been furious if they recast yeah. Palpatine. And, uh, and uh, I I, again, not to be not to belittle uh, the you know, but I, I think Ian McDermott, as we all we've all said, is a wonderful actor. I'm not belittling him. I'm just saying he's definitely less in demand than Matt yeah. Smith. Um, yeah, as far as these things go, so I don't. I'm not sure what exactly. Who knows if we'll ever find out what exactly the. the story I thought it was. was originally that he was that the character was supposed to have a bigger part, and then once they realized it was basically just going to be a tiny little flashback, he was going to play right. the basically Ray's father. And that oh, I that he yeah, was I thought the, he was going to. I thought he was more like the host, but like when when Kylo Ren gets here now, he was going to basically find Matt Smith. Right. I don't know. And talk I thought I remember hearing that he was going to be a bigger part, but then once it was like, well, the, the, you know, help. Yeah. Ray's father is just going to be seen in a tiny little thing. There's no point using yeah. Matt Smith. For as that, these things so, change. For that, yeah, so. Maybe well, as I read through, I've only read the beginning part of the uh, um, Duel of the Fates script. So maybe as we oh, okay. get through it, it it'll, yeah. be, it'll become clear. Right. Um, But yeah, big statues of Sith legends. Mm hmm. And uh, Kylo Ren hears a voice saying, at last. At last. Right. My love is here to stay. <laughs> um, I, uh, since Adam Driver is the only actor we've seen so far, I have a little one line of Adam Driver trivia. I don't remember if this has ever come up before, but apparently at one point he was a door-to-door vacuum cleaner salesman, hmm. which seems like, is that still a thing? <laughs> <laughs> like he's not know. that old. It, like, what I mean, was he doing? This I've never 90s? seen a door to door salesman. Yeah, you know, it, and you know, going back to the seventies, I, I feel like they were already extinct in the seventies. Yeah, or into the eighties, other than like you know the kind of pyramid scheme stuff. But like the 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 classic kind of you know vacuums or not. No, that's not true. brushes. I know. I know a f- friend of mine. I think did door to door knife sales. When he was in wow, high that seems really uh, like you would never do that now. I'm, I go to door to door with showing people with my sharp knives. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, speaking of Kylo Ren, I have here the Spotify playlist. If oh you yeah, want to, uh, let's go bring back that to back. That bit of mm-hmm. fun. 
I kind of set it aside because I recognize almost none of these songs. Mm. Uh, so I will. Um, are they what? What is? Are they emo? Are they kind of new? They tend to be more on the um, new metal. Yeah, like uh, there is a. Uh, I'll just name some of the bands. Okay. Avenged Sevenfold. Oh, off. Yeah, yeah. Bring me the horizon. Breaking Benjamin. Chevelle. Uh, like these Ashes of Eden. They all have. It seems like a kind of more heavy like, emo. Right. Stuff. There's emo a Motorhead metal. song. Motorhead. Which one? Uh, want to guess? Probably not Ace of Spades. No. Thunder and Lightning. Hmm. Makes sense. Yeah. His, yeah. His fingers. Uh, yeah. So it's a lot of like rancid. Marilyn Manson, Manson, that that end of things. Hmm. Breed by Nirvana. Hmm. What, ran- what Rancid song? That kind of stuff. I guess they tried to lean on the cool side of it rather than him listening to like, uh, you know, all the emo bands I was going to name are like 30 years old. So, you right, know, yeah. Morrissey, for instance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I guess the, they didn't, they right. that was a little too, oh, who knows, it's probably all corporate sponsorships and, you know. <laughs> The band's right. paid for their things to be. Used. Although, who was it? Anakin that has the Motion City soundtrack in his playlist. One of oh, them. I don't know. I one of the characters kind of has has uh, the band leader. Huh, that's cool. <clears throat> um, um, yeah, kind of but rant. yeah, minute four. That's all I got. We got we got some actual uh, dialogue between two characters coming up in At minute five. Last. So I guess he has the first line. Uh, Ian McDermott. Hey, there you go. At last. So, yeah. did you hear that? Uh, who, who, I'm trying to think of other. Who has the first line in, in uh, The Phantom Menace? Is it Antidar Williams or whatever? Like the one of the pilots being like. Oh, maybe. Or is it. Is it no, I think it's like Qui Gon or Obi Wan saying, like, you know, pull up over there, uh, approaching <laughs> the planet or something like that. There's I a don't spot know. there. No, no, no. Closer. Cl- oh, forget it. We'll just walk. Yeah. <laughs> um,. And just interesting, we're, interesting ways to open up the dialogue to open up the trilogy. Yeah. Oh, no, we're not opening up the trilogy. We're wrapping up the trilogy. Yeah. It's the first line of dialogue in the last episode of the right. trilogy. Right. So C-3PO, again, in, in Return of the Jedi, right? Uh, oh, no, no. Uh, we start with the Death Star. We start with Moff Trigerid or or. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Endicott uh, opening up the doors or whatever. Yes, that's right. With him arriving and okay. talking about the Emperor. And then the so, um, we're, we're right into the Sith. You would know better than I do. How does that start? Uh, well, it starts with Obi Wan and Anakin flying their ships in that battle. So it's, right. it's going to okay. be Anakin or Obi Wan talking about flying their ships okay. in that battle. Hey, remember when we were flying our ships in that battle? Anakin, that that's cool. happening right now. <laughs> He's never has his mind on where he is, <laughs> or what he should be doing. All uh, right. Well. That yeah. is all I had for minute four. Exegol. Um, and we'll get, like I said, we'll get some dialogue tomorrow mm-hmm. uh, when we when we wrap up our first week. Hey, we've uh, we've said uh, some things we haven't held up. We haven't done much in the way of visual uh, gags or humor. I did hold hold up my some of my my cables for my box of cables. Mm-hmm. Um, you can see that at StarWarsMinute.com slash YouTube um, because every episode, in addition to being a, a uh, out throw broadcast into the galaxy um uh, via podcast it's also on youtube there's video mm-hmm. of every episode um for this season last season and uh, the season before i believe right we got we got uh, i think we started think, during last jedi yeah we did last jedi we did solo and now we're doing this mm-hmm. and uh so you can plus you there can, are uh, we've recently started dabbling in uh, youtube exclusive content That's we've true. done some That's videos w- for which there are no podcasts we did yeah uh various ones i won't name them all here yeah because some of them aren't up yet but they're they're on their way and or there have been things so yeah go check, check out starwarsminute.com slash youtube and uh watch or if you're here already welcome yeah welcome and uh, hopefully, one way or another, by hook or by crook, in your eyes or in your ears, we will find you back here tomorrow for a brand new episode of Star Wars Minute. Star Wars Minute.